Seele. Hey, what's up, comic book fans? We're here again for another X-Men film. And Hugh Jackman said this is his last bout of playing the character of a Wolverine. This guy has been doing this since the year 2000. It's been 17 years. So how did he do? Well, let's find out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. As far as this movie Logan is concerned, my expectations were extremely low. Whether this movie was good or bad, I really didn't care. Because like I said, I've pretty much given up on the whole X-Men franchise by 20th Century Fox. I usually, they, in my opinion, they just don't know how to adapt not only comic book movies, but adapt anything, period. But that's just how I feel. I mean, you may love everything that they produce. And as far as the old X-Men films, I mean, I think they're fine. They came out, the first one was in 2000 with Brian Singer. He gave us the first two. And like I said, those two were fine. I thought X-Men, the last stand, the third one was a, an abysmal mess that should be erased from history. But overall, they were okay. I was really frustrated at the end of part three, especially, you know, I mean, one of my favorite characters growing up in the 90s X-Men cartoon was Iceman. And it took us three films to get him show his for him to show his true powers. And it was only like 10 seconds. So that was just one of the many gripes that I have with that franchise. I mean, I have it here on Blu-ray, uh, X-Men 1, 2 and 3. I, I also the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, which was a shitty mess as well. And, you know, I just got that at like a, a, a Black Friday bargain band for like seven bucks, the whole Blu-ray collection. So, um, I really didn't like those films. But then again, in 2011, Matthew Vaughn came around and rebooted the whole franchise with X-Men First Class. And I love this film to death. This is easily in my top 10 most favorite comic book movies of all time. This movie is flawless to me. I loved it. If you saw a video I did about a year and a half ago, this was included in my top 10, um, not just best X-Men movies of all time, but uh, top 10 best comic book superhero movies of all time. I love this movie, and I really wanted Matthew Vaughn to stay within this franchise and give us more and more X-Men films, because not only is he a great director and writer, he is a fan of the material, and won't just go overboard with ridiculous fanboy-isms that really don't cater to the story. But 20th Century Fox, you know, ruined it, and they... Uh, connected that rebooted franchise with the all films giving us x-men days of future past and this film was good i'm, I'm not gonna hate on it I, I really did enjoy this film i had a, a few nitpicks here and there that i won't address here you can go back and check out my previous videos i thought it was a great film but not as good as x-men first class now as far as wolverine is concerned he's a very popular character he is the ultimate warrior and one thing that really pissed me off in the early x-men films is the guy is the ultimate warrior and has claws coming out of his hands that are made out of animantium indestructible metal and he's going around stabbing people left and right and there is never any blood there's never any guts coming out, arms or legs flying off. It's just really frustrating. And James Mango in 2000, uh, 2013 or 14, I should know that, he gave us the Wolverine. And at this time, this was the best X-Men movie. There was a lot of CGI blood, and I enjoyed the movie for the most part, other than the ending. And if, if you look at this, this is the unreleased unrated extended edition and this was an honorable mention for me in my top 10 now the theatrical release was just okay uh, but this extended release right here really did pick things up they gave us a lot of blood and they it, 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 gave, it served the character right you know it served the character justice and gave us the x-men character wolverine that we wanted to see but then again it was still okay and um, just jumping back and forth, I, you know, losing faith in 20th Century Fox and all the X-Men, they gave us uh, X-Men Apocalypse. And um, this movie was entertaining slightly, but overall, uh, a big disappointment. So with all that being said, when they were coming out with this Logan movie, I just was not excited. 
of course, with me being a comic book fan and loving everything that Marvel uh, Studios is doing with their cinematic universe, you know, a perfect world for me would be for Fox to sell the rights or Marvel to buy the rights of the X-Men uh, characters and have a big, large, cohesive universe. But that's more than likely never going to happen. So 20th Century Fox is going to keep on making their movies and I was just going to keep on getting disappointed. This Logan movie comes out and I'm not excited and um, I just kind of gave up hope. But anyway, the first trailer for Logan came out and, and uh, they had the song by Johnny Cash, um, it, you know, looming in the background and it just didn't do anything for me. I just was not excited. I was just like, OK, this this movie sucks. I mean, you know, either way, if it's if it's a good movie, hey. We have a good X-Men uh, Logan Wolverine movie. If the movie sucks, that increases the chances that the rights will go back to Marvel. Because if 20th Century Fox is not making money with these X-Men films, they're not going to keep making them. I mean, they will probably have to bomb three to four films in a row, you know, for them to start negotiating, giving the rights back to Marvel Studios. But it's a long shot and I wasn't counting on it. But when the trailer first dropped, like I said, I wasn't looking into this movie. I wasn't excited about it. But... The second trailer dropped, and it was a completely different tone, and it had X-23, and I'll touch on her later in the trailer. You know, she debuted in the trailers, and it was completely different tone from what came before. And I was just saying to myself, okay, man, this looks really good. I can get on board with this. I am excited. And then at that point is when I started to get on board with the new Logan movie. I started looking up what Mango had to say and his motivations behind this and that and why he chose to include X-23. And X-23 is a character that I am not too familiar with. And apparently Fox is not too familiar with either. They didn't even know that they had the rights to that character. It was somebody, you know, um, back behind the scenes that had to remind them. And I guess they just dusted it off, you know, gave uh, James Mango, the director, free reign to do what he did. And he did the damn thing. With this Logan movie, because God damn it, it is freaking amazing. But let me not get too excited before I go there. Now, if you're a fan of comic books, you already know this. But if not, if this is just not your thing, you know that this film, Logan, is loosely based off the old man Logan story. And he's old, and he's decrepit, and his mutant powers are not what they used to be he's not able to heal as fast as he can even in the trailers when he's trying to use his animatium claws they're getting stuck and not you know shooting in and out all seamless like they were i mean the, you know he's just tired and wants to be left the hell alone and just die peacefully but for some reason he is cursed and we don't know why and it just seems like every time he just tries to get away and just live his life alone in peace over the to the side in the corner there's always somebody that has to come mess with him and that's what this movie is about now as far as all the x-men films as far as continuity is concerned it's like they don't even know what the word continuity means for this film logan it really doesn't matter this is set in the near uh distant future and if you've never seen any other of the x-men films it doesn't matter this is more standalone wolverine's um He's old and he's about to die and Professor X is in his last days as you can see from the trailers and this is just a completely different world from what we've known before and that's just kind of exciting because you know you, you like these characters and you want to see them you know flourish throughout time but this just kind of gives you a fresh take on what you already love you know giving you something new so it's just really nice to see you know logan or wolverine trying to adapt to this new world that we don't know trying to you know just be left alone now the action in this film is freaking amazing i mean if anything else if you don't care about seeing characters if you don't care about seeing stories or anything like that if you just want to see somebody go the f off and slice up everybody this movie is for you i mean my goodness gracious the action is so like ridiculous i'm still shocked that they went this far with it i mean it's not nasty gory to the point to where you're going to be covering up your faces no i mean you're going to wish you have 15 eyes on your face so that you can see it all it's so damn satisfying in this movie wolverine stabs at least 50 people in the face with his claws at least 50 he kills much more than that but he stabs in the face 
at least 50 different people. And then X23 is doing the same thing. I mean, it's like the, when these, te- these two are like teaming up together, taking down all the bad guys, it's like they've been training together for like 20 plus years or something. And I'm exaggerating because the girl is like 10 or 11 years old. I mean, it's just amazing how they're doing this and how all these action scenes are so well choreographed. I mean, it just really goes to show how talented James Mango really is because he directed this thing and he wrote it and you can tell that he learned from a lot of the mistakes that he made in the past Wolverine film the Wolverine I mean I I can honestly say I don't know this because you know this wasn't released or anything but I really feel like he actually paid attention to all the fans on all the complaints that they had in the past X-Men films and wanted to address that and fix it here because I mean this is I mean, possibly one of the most well, best adapted uh, superhero or comic book characters, uh, period. Uh, better than Deadpool. Uh, well, I don't want to say well Wolverine. Well, Wolverine. I was going to say uh, he probably even better adapted than uh, Iron Man. Um, because I-, I think it's just the shock value. Because we have been, as fans, we have been wanting this type of kick-assery for so long. We've literally been waiting 17 years. That's not an exaggeration. And from the first frame of this movie, we get to finally get to see the Wolverine go the F off and kill every damn person that comes into his path. I mean, he is just slicing people left and right. Just going here, slicing this way, slicing this way, all types of moves, like he's practicing in his best in his backyard or something like, oh, who can I kill today? Just swinging at the air. I mean, I, I don't know how his skill level is like, it's just gotten so much better with his age. And it, it, it's so enticing and attractive and intriguing and exciting because it's like he powers up after every kill. I mean, he just was stabbing people. Oh! And I'm just sitting there like, yes! It is literally impossible not to have fun with this film because, I mean, it gives you everything that you want. The action is just top-notch, insane, you know, levels beyond, beyond what came before. It is the perfect adaptation for the Logan character uh, from the X-Men cartoon and comic books that we all know and love. Now... That doesn't mean that this film is perfect, because a perfect would be a perfect 10 out of a 10. And is this a 10 out of a 10? No, it it is not a 10 out of a 10. Um, But that's okay, because most films aren't. I do have a few gripes, because some of the things that bother bother me was... The point of the antagonist was not entirely clear. And then when it was clear, it seemed like they had, they have accomplished their objective, but they were still fighting. And I, I wonder why. I mean, they are, okay, as you know from the trailers, they're after Wolverine and or Laura, X-23. They're trying to capture her. They're possibly trying to capture her because she escaped from somewhere and they want her DNA to grow more mutants. But when you look at, when you look at their base, and I don't want to spoil anything here because there are characters that pop up that that will spoil it for you. You just look at them like, okay, you already have what you need because you was able to create this character here. And it seems like a better version. So why do you want, why are you still chasing this character over here? Won't you just let them go off and do their own thing? Now, they could not want those characters to go off and do their own thing because they could possibly come back later to pose another threat in the future. But if that's the case, give me a line of dialogue or two to address that. You know, I, as me as an audience member, I shouldn't be filling in the holes for you making assumptions. Another gripe I had is if you're trying to capture certain characters and not kill them, why are you using bullets? Okay, maybe you want to use the bullets because the characters that, you know, you're trying to attack have rapid healing abilities. But at the same time, why don't you use tranquilizer darts? Now, before you jump on my case saying that, hey, Brandon, if you say you know your comic book stuff, tranquilizers don't work on Wolverine. Well, that's where you're wrong because it, it goes both ways because in some of the 90s cartoons, film adaptations or the animated stuff or comic book uh, cartoons or whatever from back in the day, sometimes tranquilizers would affect Wolverine. Sometimes they wouldn't. That's just a bit of inconsistency throughout the whole X-Men lore from, you know, many, many, many decades ago. Another gripe of mine, and, um, you know, this is just, you know, this is, this is a small, small gripe, is 
Um, at times, there was uh, an excess amount of exposition to where one character is kind of, you know, filling you in on all the background of how things came to be to this point. And given the circumstances, I was saying, okay, there will be, it's damn near impossible for you to have a cell phone to record all this activity. I mean, they would have, it's just impossible. No one in their right mind would have, the security would be just too advanced for you to be able to do this and get this footage out to put it out to the world. But those are just minor nitpicks. Overall, guys, this film is freaking amazing. I mean, you're going to love it. It's impossible not to love. I mean, this is easily easily in the top 10 best superhero movies of all time this is now one thing that uh maybe you want to know now how does this fare against all the other x-men films would you say that this is the best x-men film that 20th century fox ever produced the answer to that is no i still give that award to x-men uh first class because for me this is movie is a perfect 10 you may not feel that way a lot of people feel that x-men days of future past is better than this i don't know why but i mean you know i still feel that this is better the only reason i feel that this is better is because the nitpicks that i uh was just listed and there are i don't have any nitpicks in this film now the action far 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 is superior than x-men first class i mean I mean, all across the board, the action is is far beyond this right here. I mean, seriously. So the action is better in Logan, but the overall story um, and all the cohesiveness is better for me in X-Men First Class. Now, if I had to rate this movie Logan out of a 1 out of 10, this is the hard part. I am going to give Logan, I just give it, a, I'm going to give it a 9 out of a 10, a straight up nine out of a ten it is great i cannot wait to see this movie again i'm going to see it again i'm gonna see it at least two or three more times in theaters you know bottom blu-ray of course or that's that's just automatic but i'm going to see it in theaters at least two more times probably the thursday that it's uh, released not at midnight but you know how they do the seven o'clock shows i'm gonna go see it again but i'll give logan a nine out of ten but guys that's just my opinion were you lucky enough to see logan uh do you want to see it did i turn you on did i turn you off let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel to become one of my subscribers to get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. Also, if you would like a written review of this, you can head over to the site www.justmyopinion.net or hit me up on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. So guys, that's just my opinion of Logan. I love this movie. You will too. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.